Hello and welcome to a beautiful spring day here at Millbrook Proving Ground. Think of this place as car hell. This is where manufacturers come to put their latest creations through their paces before putting them into production. There's a high-speed bowl behind me for testing high-speed stability. There's an extra bumpy cobbled street for testing ride comfort and suspension. And there's a lovely twisty alpine road for testing silly goose capabilities. You've probably seen this place on TV without even realising Top Gear used to come here a lot. Daniel Craig rolled his Aston Martin here in Casino Royale. Sorry to disappoint you, that wasn't Montenegro, that was Bedford. And we're here today to test out a car that is currently going through testing. A car that is ever so nearly ready for production, a car that is extremely gold, and a car with quite a lot of pressure resting on its shoulders, considering its predecessor was, until recently, the most popular electric car ever. So, welcome to the difficult second album. This is the Nissan Aria, and this is Fully Charged. Now here's the glaring difference between the Aria and the Leaf. When the Nissan Leaf came out in 2011, it had no competition whatsoever. It was the electric car if you wanted an electric car. So the things that were less good about it, and there were plenty of them, people forgave because you had no choice but to forgive them if you wanted to drive an EV. That is no longer the case. The Aria is entering a congested segment. There are more medium-sized electric SUVs than there are any other kind of electric car. And there are some really good ones as well. Ionic 5 EV6, I love those cars. The Renault Megane, which Robert recently drove in Spain, the sister car of this, which shares its platform. Brilliant, brilliant car. So the question I have today is, how does this thing distinguish itself from its French sibling? And more generally, what does it do to stand out from the crowd? First impressions of the Nissan Aria cabin. And these really are first impressions. I just got into this car. We don't have very much time today, so we're winging it. Well, what do I think? Well, I think we'll start with these buttons on here. These are the things I've been the most nervous about because it looks very pleasing. I like the way they've illuminated these buttons that are flush with this kind of faux wood piece. But how do they feel to press? Ooh. Oh, I quite like that actually. It's haptic, but it's got a proper, a proper tactility to it. I was very worried that these were just gonna be touchy touch buttons and extremely annoying. But I don't mind that. Oh, I quite like them. Happily, they've not made the classic mistake of fitting haptic buttons to the steering wheel, as everyone from Tesla and Mercedes to VW seems to think is a good idea at the moment. Baffling to me. Physical buttons on the steering wheel, good. Dual screen setup, we don't have one gigantic portrait screen. Uh, Nissan reckons that this layout works better for keeping your eye line nearer the road, and that actually does make an awful lot of sense. Noticing I've got a heads up display on this version too. All quite clean and simple really, not too much in the way of buttons. That does slightly make you nervous because it means that you're gonna have to spend a lot of time navigating this infotainment system, except that this car, like its Renault sibling, is using Google designed software. This seems to be becoming normalized now. Just let Google do your software for you. They are better than you at it. So my hope is that this system is going to be quite straightforward to use. It certainly is responsive. Here's something quite fun that I just noticed. Look at this. When you're sat charging, little desk, little desk for your laptop while you're doing a bit of work. That's quite fun. As is this center console, like the Onyx 5, moves. Ooh, so you can have it all the way forward so that when you're doing some intense driving, you've got somewhere to anchor your knee, or you can get it right out of the way and enjoy the full experience of this completely flat floor. There's a lot of space down here. You can tell Nissan has stayed loyal to that classic high shoulder, big frontal area SUV shape. And this is the benefit of that, tons of space. Although, seats as low as it goes, packing in headroom. I'm actually a bit short on, Headroom. I know people like to sit high, but 
I think the seat is just a tiny bit too high in the cabin for someone of my freakish height. Historically, my feelings on Nissans are that they're functional. They get the job done, but they're not especially desirable. I've never sat in a Nissan and gone, ooh. But this one is quite ooey. Shall we have a little nosy around the outside of this car then? Shall we begin with the colour? I think we ought. It's called Akatsuki Copper and here's a fun story. It's designed to match the colour of the sky at the break of dawn because the Nissan Aria represents a new dawn at Nissan. Ooh, very profound. Doesn't change the fact that it looks to me like the Sultan of Brunei's bathtub, but each to their own. Actually, in the right colour, I think this is a really nice looking car. In an age where Modern car design just seems to be getting fussier, more lines, more creases that don't complement each other. This thing's quite straightforward. I'll give you a great example of this. This is called the Horizon line. It starts here at the badge. It goes around, along the bottom of the headlights. It goes along the side of the car. It goes along the top of the light bar. And it's the same on this side, one unbroken line around the car. And there really isn't much more to it than that. It's simple and straightforward but quite a nice bit of design, in my opinion. At the front, a few things worth noting. Nice quad headlight there. Anyone else? A bit reminiscent of a Bugatti Chiron? That's where the similarities stop, I can assure you. Nice fang daytime running lights here. Big smiley face. I think it's quite a happy looking car. And this is what Nissan calls the tech shield. This is where all the sensors for the self-driving systems are housed. We've got a little intake down the bottom for battery cooling. We've got a functional air curtain here, air sweeps in there, goes across those aero wheels and along the side of the car, increasing efficiency, uh, reducing drag coefficient. That's about it for the front. Nice looking thing in the right colour. I'll tell you this, the best colour for this car is actually the one you get for free. It's called Aurora Green and it looks really dark green, even black, until the sun shines on it and then it sparkles. So what you notice along the side is the high shoulders. This is a proper, proper SUV. Things like the Kia EV6, they claim to be crossovers, but actually the seating position is quite low. The whole car is quite low for aerodynamics, for maximum range. Nissan have kept the proper full SUV experience because, well, people seem to like that sort of thing. About four and a half meters long, ever so slightly bigger than a Qashqai. If you know what one of those is, notice how those wheels are pushed right out to the extremities. What that should mean, because of that bespoke EV architecture, is a lot of cabin space. We'll find out in a second. Wheels, only 19 or 20 inch available on the Aria. Nissan wants you to have a little bit of squish because it's a 2.2 ton SUV. So you want some squish. No 22 inch curb seekers on this car. Round the back, again, just simple, simple, clean design. Compare this to something like a BMW iX and you've got crazy lines and creases everywhere that don't really complement each other. This is nice and simple. I like that they've gone for the Nissan font instead of the badge at the back. Nice light bar running the width of the car, just like every new car. Boots, let's have a quick look in here. 466 litres for this single motor front wheel drive variant. If you want the second motor in the back, that drops down to 408 litres. Pretty big boot, which is a good thing because no frunk in the Aria. Yeah. I'm so sorry to do this, but can I very quickly ask you to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below that says, Jack, you're in the boot of a car, because it helps the channel grow. Also, come to Fully Charged Live. It's going to be fantastic. Farnborough, last two days of April, first day of May. Get your tickets right now. Link down below. Bye. Back seats, jack test, seats in my driving position. And, and look at this, look at this. That is, that is a proper big load of space. I can really stretch out back here. Somehow I feel like I've got slightly more headroom in the back. It's a big roomy car. And again, bespoke EV architecture, flat floor. The battery, Nissan were telling me, is designed to be super, super skinny to absolutely maximize the amount of floor space in this car. And I can tell 
This is in a different stratosphere to the Nissan Leaf. It's not even comparable in terms of premium feel. Of course, this is not a replacement for the Leaf. It will sit above it. And you can certainly tell that in here. Much posher cabin than an ID4 or Enyaq, in my opinion. Ionic 5, EV6, different sort of vibes. It depends what you're into, but I think this is really well executed. Clean, simple, and seemingly quite intuitive. Shall we have some stats? Let's have some stats. Pricing, this car starts at around 42,000 pounds, going up to 58 grand for the big battery, fully specced out dual motor variant. Not a cheap car. That means that the higher end models are in competition with Tesla Model Y's, Mustang Mac E's, stiff competition. Battery, two options, 63 kilowatt hours or 87 kilowatt hours. Uh, with the bigger battery, you'll be seeing between 265 and 315 miles of range, real world, depending on, again, how many motors you choose to have and how heavy a right foot you have. Charging, now this is interesting. The car charges up to 130 kilowatts, which is not as fast as some other stuff out there, like the Ionic 5 or the Kia EV6. However, Nissan claims that if you look at a graph of the charging speed curve, the Aria can beat a lot of those higher charging rate cars because it starts charging very quickly, immediately, and stays up there for a longer period of time, where many cars, they start off a bit slowly, they charge fast, they start slowing down again to preserve the battery. Nissan reckons that the way that they've designed this battery, it can charge faster for longer, meaning shorter charging stops. Other thing worth noting as far as specs, you can only have the dual motor variant, which Nissan calls E-Force, if you spec the big battery. The small battery, Aria, available only as a single motor car. E-Force, E-Force, Tech Shield. Who did the marketing for Nissan? Optimus Prime? Fun thing about filming at Millbrook, you're sharing a test track with some very prototype top secret vehicles. There's something in my rear view mirror right now, which for legal reasons I can't tell you about, but it's wild. Now this is gonna be far from a full review because we have a very short amount of time with this car today and it is pre-production, but we can get some early ideas. Initial driving impressions of the Aria, first things I'm noticing, well, sure it's as comfortable as I was hoping that it might be. We've got those big squashy tyres, and granted this is on the bigger 20 inch rims, which are gonna slightly reduce ride comfort. It's also worth noting that this is a pre-production car, so there's every chance that the suspension is still being refined and tweaked. But I do think it could do with being refined and tweaked because it's making a bit of a meal of some of the bumps on this road. Now the thing about this car is, on paper, it plays to all of Nissan's strengths. Electric car, they've been doing those longer than any other OEM in the shape of the Leaf. Crossovers, well, Nissan invented the crossover. Before that cash car came along in the mid 2000s, they weren't a thing. SUVs were for going off-road in. And they know their way around handling as well. The Nissan GTR is one of the best handling performance cars in the world. And Nissan claims that all the learnings from all three of those cars are apparent in this Aria. Now I'm gonna start by addressing the elephant in the room. This does not handle like a performance car, it handles like a two-ton SUV. It's not slow, even in this single motor guise, it gets going just fine. But it also feels like it weighs about two tons. I've not got any feel through my steering. Sport mode only really seems to make the steering a bit heavier. I think Nissan may have laid it on a little thick with the sporty pretenses of the Aria in the sort of marketing literature. I haven't driven the E-Force full fat, super powerful all wheel drive version yet. Maybe that will change my mind, but initial impression is that, yeah, this feels like a, like a big family SUV and nothing else. Visibility, really good. That's not a given in a big crossover SUV. I can see very clearly out the front. Visibility on the sides is good. I've got this nice digital rear view mirror, which is serving me really well. Easy car to see out of. I don't think it would be a struggle to park 
it does get that top-down camera angle as standard this and I've actually been doing that for about a decade now you don't get the fancy 360 but you do get the top-down view which again makes parking really straightforward oh here's something I really really liked when they told it to me in the presentation you know how when you put your car into auto steer mode and it keeps itself in lane in cruise control like Tesla's do like just about every electric car does you often have to apply a bit of pressure to the wheel every few seconds just to let the car know that you've not fallen asleep. Do you know what I mean? Tesla owners, you know what I mean? You've just got to yank the wheel every 10 or so seconds or the car beeps at you because it thinks you've nodded off. Really annoying. And that's because in most cars, it's using a torque sensor. It needs to feel a little twist of the wheel in order to know you're awake. Nissan have got pressure sensors in the steering wheel, which means when I'm going along the motorway, and the car is keeping me in lane, all I need is one finger. One finger on the wheel like that. No pressure, no twisting. That will be enough to let the car know you're awake, you're alert. I'll do the steering for you. Nice. At the end of the day, what we seem to have here is a really competent, very spacious, extremely well-equipped family SUV with big range. Concluding thoughts on the Aria then? Well, look, pre-prod, pre-prod, let's not get too carried away, but I've definitely noticed a few things about this car. Let me just say this to begin. I wasn't that excited for it, and I think that's less the car's fault and more the fault of how many posh electric SUVs there are. I saw this and I thought, oh God, another one. <laughs> how is it gonna stand out? Well, based on my couple of hours with it, I do think it has a couple of standout features versus its competition. Number one, is that platform, that brilliant platform built in conjunction with Renault. These are two brands with a lot of EV experience and you can tell, you can tell from the amount of range they've gotten out of it. You can tell from how cleverly it charges so that you're not sat at the charger for too long and from how skinny they've managed to make the battery, allowing maximum cabin space. That is years of EV experience implemented. What else? I like the sensible Nissan-ness of it, that cabin, very intuitive, very easy to use you get a lot of standard equipment and there's just some nice thoughtful touches in there i like the movable center console and the third thing it's got going for it is a little bit of japanese inspired style and flair i like the way it looks inside and out i'm a really big fan of that cabin layout for me first impressions more premium than a tesla model y better looking than a mustang mach -E. I'm not going to say any more than that until I've driven the final car. The ride needs some work. There's a few uh, slightly rattly bits that I'm sure are going to be ironed out before we get to the final version, but it's looking like a very promising package. Choosing your posh electric SUV is about to get even harder. So there we go. Nissan Aria, prototype. Looking forward to driving the real thing, the final thing, as soon as possible. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode with Jack. I mean, everyone enjoys episodes with Jack. Jack's marvellous. No, Jack's young. Jack's tall. Jack's got loads of hair. I hate Jack. Anyway, here's another episode that Jack did. It's absolutely brilliant. Here's our latest episode. Up there, you can subscribe to Fully Charged to get more Jack. And there, you can support Jack on Patreon.